1 Chronicles 11 Then all Israel gathered to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Previously, even when Saul was king, you were the one who led out and brought in Israel. And Yahweh your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will be a ruler over my people Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and David cut a covenant with them in Hebron before Yahweh. Then they anointed David king over Israel, according to the word of Yahweh through Samuel. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, that is, Jebus, and the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, were there. Then the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, You shall not come in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, that is, the city of David. And David said, Whoever strikes down a Jebusite first shall be chief and commander. Joab the son of Zariah went up first, so he became chief. Then David lived in the stronghold, therefore it was called the city of David. And he built the city all around, from the Milo even to the surrounding area, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. And David became greater and greater, and Yahweh of hosts was with him. Now these are the heads of the mighty men whom David had, who gave him strong support in his kingdom, together with all Israel, to make him king, according to the word of Yahweh concerning Israel. These constitute the list of the mighty men whom David had. Jashubim, the son of the Hakmonite, the chief of the thirty, he lifted up his spear against three hundred slain by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahoahite, who was one of the three mighty men. He was with David at Pazdamim. Now the Philistines had gathered together there to battle, and there was a portion of the field full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. But they took their stand in the midst of that portion and delivered it and struck down the Philistines. So Yahweh saved them by a great salvation. Then three of the thirty chief men went down to the rock of David, to the cave of Adullam, while the camp of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in the fortress, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. Then David had a craving and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which was by the gate, and carried it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David was not willing to drink it, but poured it out to Yahweh. And he said, Be it far from me before my God that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? For at the risk of their lives they brought it. Therefore he was not willing to drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abshai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the thirty. And he swung his spear against three hundred who were slain by him. And he had a name as well as the thirty. Of the three in the second rank, he was the most honored and became their commander. However, he did not attain to the first three. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, mighty in deeds, struck down the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. He had also struck down an Egyptian, an impressive man, five cubits tall. Now in the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam, but he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah the son of Jehoiada did, and had a name as well as the three mighty men. Behold, he was honored among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three, and David appointed him over his guard. Now the mighty men of the military forces were Asahel the brother of Joab, Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shemoth the Herorite, Halez the Pelonite, Ira the son of Akesh the Tekoite, Abiezar the Anothathite, Sibachai the Hushathite, Eli the Ahoahite, Maharai the Natophathite, Heled the son of Banah the Natophathite, Ithai the son of Ribai of Gibeah of the sons of Benjamin, Benaiah the Parathonite, Hurai of the brooks of Gash, Abiel the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Barumite, Eliaba the Shalbanite, the sons of Hashem the Gizanite, Jonathan the son of Shagi the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sacher the Hararite, Eliphal the son of Ur, Hefer the Macarathite, Ahijah the Pelonite, Hezro the Carmelite, Neriah the son of Ezbi, 
Joel the brother of Nathan, Mibhar the son of Hagri, Zelek the Ammonite, Nahariah the Barathite, the armor-bearer of Joab the son of Zariah, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad the son of Ali, Adina the son of Shiza the Reubenite, a chief of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan the son of Makkah, and Joshaphat the Mithnite, Uzziah the Ashtarathite, Shammah and Jael the sons of Hotham the Aurorite, Jadiel the son of Shimri, and Johah his brother the Tizite, Eliel the Mahavite, and Jerabiah and Joshaviah the sons of Elnam, and Ithma the Moabite, Eliel and Obed, and Jaziel the Mezobite. First Chronicles 12 Now these are the ones who came to David at Ziklag, while he was still restricted because of Saul the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men who helped him in war. They were equipped with bows, using both the right hand and the left to sling stones and to shoot arrows from the bow. They were Saul's relatives from Benjamin. The chief was Ahaziar, then Joash, the sons of Shammah the Gibeathite, and Jeziel and Pelet, the sons of Asmaveth, and Barakah and Jehu the Anothathite, and Ishmaiah the Gibeonite, a mighty man among the thirty and over the thirty. Then Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johonan, Jazabad the Gedarathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beliah, Shemariah, Shephatiah the Harufite, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Jozer, Jashabam the Korahites, and Jola and Zebediah the sons of Jehoram of Geder. From the Gadites mighty men of valor separated themselves to David in the stronghold in the wilderness. Men of war who had gone out for military duty, who could handle large shield and spear, and whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the gazelles on the mountains. Ezer was the first, Obadiah the second, Eliab the third, Mishmanah the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, Machbani the eleventh. These of the sons of Gad were chiefs of the army. He who was least was equal to one hundred, and the greatest to one thousand. These are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks, and they made all those in the valleys flee, both to the east and to the west. Then some of the sons of Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold to David. David went out before them, and he answered and said to them, If you come peacefully to me to help me, my heart shall be united with you. But if to betray me to my adversaries, since there is no violence in my hands, may the God of our fathers look on it and reprove. And the spirit clothed Amasiah, who was chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, O David, and with you, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to him who helps you. Indeed, your God helps you. Then David received them and made them chiefs of the band. Now from Manasseh also some defected to David when he was about to go to battle with the Philistines against Saul, but they did not help them, for the lords of the Philistines after counsel sent him away, saying, At the cost of our heads he may defect to his master Saul. As he went to Ziklag, there defected to him from Manasseh, Adnah, Josabad, Jadiel, Michael, Jozebad, Elihu, Zilathai, chiefs of thousands who belonged to Manasseh, they helped David against the marauding band, for they were all mighty men of valor and were commanders in the army. For day by day men came to David to help him, until there was a great camp like the camp of God. Now these are the numbers of the companies equipped for military duty, who came to David at Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the command of Yahweh. The sons of Judah who bore shield and spear were six thousand eight hundred equipped for military duty. Of the sons of Simeon, Mighty men of valor for military duties, 7,100. Of the sons of Levi, 4,600. Now Jehoiada was the leader of the house of Aaron, and with him were 3,700. Also Zadok, a young man, mighty of valor, and his father's house, 22 commanders. Of the sons of Benjamin, Saul's relatives, 3,000. For until now, the greatest part of them had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. Of the sons of Ephraim, 20,800, mighty men of valor, men who had a name in their father's households. 
of the half-tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 who were designated by name to come and make David king, of the sons of Issachar, men who knew how to discern the times, to know what Israel should do. Their chiefs were two hundred, and all their relatives were at their command. Of Zebulun there were fifty thousand who went out in the army, who could arrange themselves for battle with all kinds of weapons of war, and help David with an undivided heart. Of Naphtali there were one thousand commanders, and with them thirty-seven thousand with large shield and spear. Of the Danites who could arrange themselves for battle, there were twenty-eight thousand six hundred. Of Asher there were forty thousand who went out in the army to arrange themselves for battle. From the other side of the Jordan, of the Reubenites and the Gadites, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, there were one hundred twenty thousand with all kinds of weapons for the army for battle. All these, being men of war who could draw up in battle lines, came to Hebron with their whole heart to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. They were there with David three days, eating and drinking, for their relatives had prepared for them. Moreover, those who were near to them, even as far as Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and on oxen, great provisions of flour, fig cakes, and bunches of raisins, wine, oil, oxen, and sheep. There was gladness indeed in Israel. Hebrews 13 Let love of the brothers continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember the prisoners as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you yourselves also are in the body. Marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled, for the sexually immoral and adulterers God will judge. Make sure that your way of life is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, through which those who were so occupied were not benefited. Do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, through which those who were so occupied were not benefited. We have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no authority to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as an offering for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. So let us go out to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking the one to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, so that they will do this with joy and not with groaning, for this would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us. For we are convinced that we have a good conscience, desiring to conduct ourselves well in all things. And I urge you all the more to do this, so that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, our Lord Jesus, equip you in every good thing to do his will, by doing in us what is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. But I urge you, brothers, bear with this word of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. Know that our brother Timothy has been released, with whom, if he comes soon, I will see you. Greet all of your leaders and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amos 7 Thus Lord Yahweh showed me, and behold, he was forming a locust swarm when the spring crop began to come up, 
and behold, the spring crop was after the king's mowing. And it happened when it had completed eating the vegetation of the land that I said, Lord Yahweh, please pardon. How can Jacob rise up, for he is small? Yahweh relented concerning this. It shall not be, said Yahweh. Thus Lord Yahweh showed me, and behold, Lord Yahweh was calling to contend with them by fire. It had consumed the great deep and began to consume the farmland. Then I said, Lord Yahweh, please stop. How can Jacob rise up, for he is small? Yahweh relented concerning this. This too shall not be, said Lord Yahweh. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord was standing by a wall made with a plumb line, and in his hand was a plumb line. And Yahweh said to me, What do you see, Amos? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will pass over them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be desolated, and the sanctuaries of Israel laid waste. Then I will rise up against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent word to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is unable to endure all his words. For thus Amos says, Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will certainly go from its land into exile. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Go, you seer, flee away to the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and there do your prophesying. But no longer prophesy at Bethel, for it is a sanctuary of the king in a royal house. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I am not a prophet, nor am I the son of a prophet, for I am a herdsman and a grower of sycamore figs. But Yahweh took me from following the flock, and Yahweh said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. So now, hear the word of Yahweh. You are saying, You shall not prophesy against Israel, nor shall you drip out words against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Your wife will play the harlot in the city. Your sons and your daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be divided up by a measuring line, and you yourself will die upon unclean land. Moreover, Israel will certainly go from its land into exile. Luke 2 Now it happened that in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus for a census to be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was going to be registered for the census, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was with child. Now it happened that while they were there, the days were fulfilled for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And it happened that when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it marveled at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary was treasuring all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as was told them. And when eight days were fulfilled so that they could circumcise him, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. 
And when the days for their cleansing, according to the law of Moses, were fulfilled, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the comfort of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Master, you are releasing your slave in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were marveling at the things which were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and for a sign to be opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul as well, that the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow to the age of eighty-four. She never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. And at that very moment she came up and began giving thanks to God, and continued to speak of him to all those who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city of Nazareth. Now the child continued to grow and become strong, being filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And his parents would go to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he became twelve years old, they went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning, after finishing the days of the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know. But supposing him to be in the caravan, they went a day's journey, and they began searching for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. And it happened that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, Why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you are searching for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand the statement which he had spoken to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued in subjection to them. And his mother was treasuring all these things in her heart. And Jesus was advancing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men.